الطريقة احنا كنا بنعملها قبل كده ان بنعرف على الناس امي وابوهم بيعرفوهم When I first saw uh, smartphone apps and um, particularly some of the western dating apps and I saw them and I thought oh my god why do Muslims not have an app like this في عندك زواج العادي التقليدي يعني في عندك زواج مسيار وزواج التعددي You know for me there's no such thing as a halal day now you know it's not halal الاختيارات على المنصات والعدد الكبير هو يعطي نظرة انه جيمين وانه عندك choices لكن اصلا هو يخلق توتر كبير I was literally with the questions she was like where are you from what do you do the next one was like do you live with your family I have met with several people but all of those things they never really you know added to something significant so I had a bad experience with them I'm going to tell you a lot of mix is going to see me here I'm going to see you I'm going to see you Assalamu alaikum. I am Hanin Ahmed. I'm 23. I work in London as a junior buyer in fashion or retail, if you will. And I've lived in London for the last two years. I graduated from University of Edinburgh, did law there, and I've been working in fashion ever since. start a video with an herbal tea. Hey everyone, yes, this is what I look like when I'm editing. Cute. This should be interesting. When it comes to love and relationships, especially as a Muslim woman, I started thinking about it a lot more when I was starting to hit 21, 22, because in my culture at least, that is when we start talking about marriage and about taking relationships more seriously. So it was then when I started considering, okay, maybe I should you know, speak to my parents, maybe I should figure out what kind of a partner I want, what do I bring to the table as well, what kind of marriage I want in the future for myself. I've been a hijabi since I was 14. I've always had a very strong standpoint in terms of relationships being haram and not entertaining attention when it's not necessary. Even if, even if someone gave me attention at 18, if he wasn't going to follow that up, there was no reason to entertain it. That is why I hadn't considered it before. And also I was very tunnel vision in that I wanted to finish my education, get a job. I didn't want to do anything too early. After years of, or months of using apps, you know, the, what a lot of people end up doing is they'll use an app for a few weeks, months, and then they'll get, you know, fed up. And then they'll, you know, stop using the apps, try other ways. Then they'll go back to using the apps again. The idea came to me, we were in lockdown and I was having a conversation with a friend and she was telling me how, you know, now how am I going to meet somebody because we can't even go out and even, you know, get to see people face to face. So the way I created this business was to take that concept of, you know, having a marriage event, but actually taking it online and making it virtual. So I, obviously we were in lockdown, you couldn't go to events or you couldn't go to restaurants because they were closed. Um, we weren't allowed to meet people. So what I decided to do was use video calling platforms to allow people to log on from the comfort of their own home. Um, but it wasn't like an app. 
they were still able to see each other face to face. You could have interaction. So they would log on to the call. I would put them in breakout rooms. You know, you can have breakout rooms on video calling um, platforms. And you would have maybe three or four women talking to three or four guys. And after like maybe 10, 15 minutes, they would rotate around and they would get to speak to each other face to face, obviously the best way <laughs> with it being virtual. And then if they were happy with each other, they could swap numbers or um, I would even then put them into a one-to-one -one breakout room. I was, um, you know, in lockdown from university. So many people got married and I was thinking, you haven't even graduated. I was starting to explore like which dating apps I should try. I saw Muz on Instagram, they were advertising quite a bit. And so I thought if you know, they've, they say they have a lot of success stories. Their um, app, like the UI looks very user-friendly as well. So I thought, if, if I'm going to give it a go, I will try it with this. And that's what introduced me to the app in the first place. I thought the first impression was that men cannot take good pictures of themselves. Um, and then secondly, there are a lot of requirements that women have to jump through to, you know, to be like the perfect person for some man. And I'm like, you don't, you haven't even met me yet, but you have all these criteria and bullet point lists of what you want, but you're on a dating app. Icebreakers looking at Android and iOS, uh, I guess, how do you think both were, were done? Like, to what standard, I guess, where are we at? Yeah, I think there's a little bit more work to do, but um, an Android a little bit ahead of iOS, but I think both in a place to potentially release next week. For me now, it's like, where do we take icebreakers next? Mm. You know, what's the next evolution? How yeah, do we yeah. really build on the experience we're trying to achieve here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, I want to talk about that. So in terms of looking at, you know, as we call it, I'm going to call this icebreaker version Two. Right now we have the icons around, uh, and even like the mic icons, etc., for sending different types of content. I'm thinking, all right, how do we how do we fit in icebreakers into this view? Would we allow members to send multiple icebreakers though? Because I feel like icebreakers you should only be able to send once because you're breaking the ice. Do you know what could okay. be nice? It might be thinking ahead, but like mm. how we have like animations of confetti and stuff like that. If you actually Ooh. have like an icebreaker thing, oh, legit, if you answer it, like the ice shatters. And it just makes it better. Okay, legit, I like that. Put it on the one map, I'm not even joking. That one's a good one. I'll take a lot I'll of take. camera. Okay. <laughs> I set the app up eight years ago. I used to be a banker in a former life. I quit a lot of that, had the brainwave for this, um, and I launched it and built it in about six months. And now we've got a team around the world of about 60 odd people. The app is huge, we're the biggest in the world. We've got over six million members now. Well over, I think it's actually a quarter of a million people around the world who've actually found their partner on Muz and got married, which blows our mind. So we've definitely had a huge impact around the world. Before, when parents used to introduce you to somebody, you know, you only had a handful of people to choose from and you would probably go for the one that you kind of got along with the best. Now there are so many people to choose from. When you go online or when you go on an app, as opposed to four or five people or who were suitors or potentials, now you have hundreds, thousands of people that you're going to swipe left or right with. So these are also challenges. It's almost like there's too much choice now, so people don't know who could potentially be the right person for them. في حالات المنصات توفر عدد كبير من الاختيارات للباحثين اكتشفت يعني نفسيا انه هذا كثير سلبي الاختيارات على المنصات والعدد الكبير هو اصلا يحس انه هو يعطي نظرة انه جيمين وانه عندك تشويسز لكن اصلا هو يخلق توتر كبير ويخلق عدم الثقة في القرار وهذا يأثر على القرار نفسه I 
I actually think there was a bit of a, a brainwave moment when I first saw um, smartphone apps, um, particularly some of the Western dating apps. And I saw them and I thought, oh my God, why do Muslims not have an app like this? Yeah, so I still remember the very first story and the first wedding story. And it's kind of interesting because when I quit my job and I you know, uh, set up Muz from the bedroom of my home, and I remember I was kind of at this tipping point where I thought, have I made a mistake? You know, and should I go back to a normal job? Um, where the app was growing, but it wasn't growing you know, like crazy. Um, um, and I remember then at that point, somebody emailed in with their success story. They said, you know what, thank you so much. Thanks to us. I actually found my wife on your, on your app. Um, and they were just over the moon uh, about the whole story. And that was, for me was, uh, I think something clicked in my head that, you know what, this is real. Like people, they get married and this is, this is having a real effect on people. I downloaded Muzz and I thought, how can I, you know, put my personality into a profile? I think that's something a lot of people would struggle with because when you meet someone, it's different, but on an app, you have to kind of put everything in very few words. Student, Indian, United Kingdom. My bio is final year student. No, I will not defend you. I'm 5'2", speak languages. Um, I like hip hop, film photography and baking. Also love running and playing badminton. And then as a, as a last prompt, I said, I don't want to die on the 13th to receive flowers on the 14th, which I think, cause I was, it was half in jest. So I, that's why I thought putting a joke in there might be nice. For some reason, don't, don't know why, don't ask me. I've been getting a lot of couples TikToks on my For You page. And it's kind of, it's almost like TikTok is like, Ha, look at you, you're alone. I think initially when I started thinking about relationships and marriage, it's very natural to want someone who will respect you, someone who appreciates you for all your characteristics, for everything, for your individuality. And that is exactly what I wanted as well, is for someone to you know, respect me, to love me and appreciate um, you know, the fact that I am independent, but also I'm not going to um, you know, rely on someone. I want someone to be as a companion, but not to depend on them. I'm just gonna focus on the people who have already liked my profile. There's an age, he's 21. Wow, bit young to get married. Looking for someone to grow old with. How about you grow up first? Interests, sports, Dean, traveling, food. In that order? Swipe right of interested and let's get down to business. Man knows what he wants. We respect that. Must be British Sunni Pakistani. Height wise 5'3 and above. Buddy, you want someone who's Pakistani and over 5'3. I am Indian and 5'2. On a good day. Obviously for us, we're catering to the Muslim market. So there's certain religious requirements of what's expected when it comes to finding a partner. So, you know, within the app, we were the very first app ever to include a chaperone or a wali in the app itself. So anyone who's using it, particularly for women, they can include a family member, a brother, their father, etc., into their whole process. When the involved or the friends involved, for support, emotional support, it makes the problem يخلي المسألة في ثقة في نظرة إيجابية للموضوع مش إنه نظرة مثالية بس. Yes, obviously, like you know, you can get you know chaperones or parents who are involved in in the the whole service, but there's no difference. A lot of these apps are very very similar to the non-Muslim dating apps. I guess one huge difference in how we designed the app was around privacy, particularly again for women. So you can join the app, you don't have to use your real name, you're in full control of your photos, so you can control who actually sees you, um, which doesn't exist on mainstream apps. The same features, you still swipe left and right for a lot of them, you will still have instant chat with a lot of them, you will still, um, you know, be filtering on certain things, just like you would on a non-Muslim dating app. So if you can have certain barriers, I know some of the apps would say that the females could hide their faces uh, originally. However, there is a downfall to that because then I've heard also that if guys pay for the premium services, it automatically shows them the picture, so it kind of takes that away. One thing that we've heard from a lot of young people, particularly using Muzz, is that they find that just through the process of talking to people, whether it works out or it doesn't, um, they actually learn a lot about themselves. They learned about truly what am I looking for? 
you know, what's important to me. Um, whereas before, I think they ha often a lot of people have an impression of what they're looking for, but the reality is so different. You know, building a product, you know, our mission is transforming how Muslims meet and marry. And I want to make sure that I build something that fulfills that in a way that's, that's uh, very respectful of the faith and, you know, brings something positive to the world. So safety, expectation of behavior, super important. How have we done that? throughout the app. So we were one of the first apps full stop to have selfie verification. So when you sign up, we lock onto your front camera, we take a selfie, etc. People get together and sometimes it doesn't work out you know uh, I think one thing uh, and we've definitely had people come to us saying that that has happened um, one thing that's actually really good and, um, and one thing I'm genuinely proud of is and we spoke to quite a few couples where that has happened but they were still glad they went through this process because it was like I said on their terms you know they kind of went into it with their eyes open I think we're definitely way more proud and obviously we celebrate the stories that have worked out which are you know, probably 100 to 1 in terms of successful stories and people having babies and starting families and all that kind of good stuff. We definitely don't like to just say the word dating on its own because I agree, I think in my eyes it brings around the wrong connotations of what we're definitely not about, so I think that's important to say. بالنسبة للحلال دايتين أو المواعدة الحلال هي هي المنصات هذه تعطي إحساس بأنه هذا مسموح لأنه معظم أو أغلب المنصات للحلال دايتين أو غير الحلال هي نفسها ما فيش فرق لكن هم يحطون هال هالجمل أو هالمفردات حتى يخلوا إحساس بالأمان إنه الإشي اللي راح أعمله أنا مش خطأ وهذا اللي يخلي ساعات الأشياء الغير مقبولة أو من المجتمع أو من الأفراد تصير normalized تصير يعني وكأنه أشياء عادية. So so um, we often use you know Muslim marriage and and sometimes the word halal dating as well and sometimes people ask well, what do you mean by halal dating? Um, no doubt dating in the Western mainstream context is. Uh, you know, the whole getting to know someone with relations before marriage. Whereas for us, when we say halal dating, that's not at all what we mean. You know, we're talking about getting to know someone within the confines of Islam, but in a way that uh, allows you to get to know someone. You know, for me, there's no such thing as a halal day now. You know, it's not halal. There's no difference between a Muslim day and another day now. You know, you're going to still get people who are fraudulent on there. You're going to still have people who are there because they want to have affairs or whatever it is, or there are wrong intentions. It's kind of like, you know, trying to mix something that's Western, which is day in and online apps, with obviously traditional Muslim values. There's men and women, you know, just talking on these platforms, inappropriate conversations that are happening, people that aren't really serious, who are just there because for the wrong reasons. So yes, it is great because it allows people to interact and who are really seriously looking to find someone. Um, but equally, I do think that these platforms do have their downfalls. I think the key is you're getting to know someone and it's within a framework that's safe, that's public, that's open. Like I said, with a chaperone or a wally, done the right way for us, the word halal dating encapsulates, especially what young people colloquially term the, po the purpose of getting to know someone. So I'm Sana. I'm Hakeem. Um, we're, I'm 28 at the moment, he's still I'm 27. 27. Um, and we met four years ago on Musmatch. I was, I was looking for about two years before I met Hakeem. And I was very open about um, the ways I was going about trying to find a husband. Like I made it very known that I was looking. Um, I'd done like marriage events. I went to mosques, I asked imams. Um, I asked Rishta aunties. <laughs> Um, and I literally was on Pure Matrimony and all the other sort of sites as well. Technically, I wasn't looking. Uh, my, one of my friends put me on it and within two weeks I found somebody and I was done. 
So I was on Muz Match for maybe a year, like definitely a few months before I started talking to him. And I'm thinking like two weeks, I'm not 100% sure though. One of his pictures that he chose for his profile yeah, was in one. Egypt and I studied Egyptology. So that caught my interest. And I think when he sort of explained that he was um, mixed race as well, I thought that was interesting. Sana's profile, it was a bit different. I don't remember what was written on her profile, but she had quite a lot of pictures and they were very different. I remember her holding a flag in university um, because she was on, she was debating something or something. I don't remember what, but I, I, I don't know. She was, she just looked different and interesting. I think after I had an initial conversation with Hakeem, I asked him sort of basic questions about himself, um, you know, where he lives, what his family's like, what he's looking for. Um, I think once I was happy with that, I just wanted to push for a meeting straight away. My family is quite sort of relaxed, so um, when I first met Hakeem, I kind of went by myself to meet him at the train station. We hung out a little bit, we went and had food, and then afterwards I took him to my mom. So we met the 21st of February. I didn't want to meet her the 14th because the 14th is Valentine's Day. I don't like Valentine's Day. So the 21st of February is when I met her. And now I don't do Valentine's Day. I do the 21st of February because that means something to me. I think with us, I was trying to involve my family a lot more. She was so difficult. Um, I had to go through everybody. It's like I had to have a wrestling match with all of them to beat them up and win. Yeah, so he did have to come down quite a few times. To and it's Swindon. What's there to do in Swindon apart from the shopping outlet? <laughs> And then we got engaged in April and then had our nikah in May. So yeah. it was less than six months. Well, Sana always says that we did have an arranged marriage. The only difference is we arranged it ourselves. So our parents didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sana, so yeah, Sana doesn't like saying that we met and we, we were never dating, you know. We arranged our own marriage between ourselves. So Tinder, I have not because it had its, when I was in university, it had a reputation for being a very casual app and with being Muslim, that doesn't quite go hand in hand with relationships. Um, that is why I didn't try Tinder. I have tried Hinge because you can filter it to religion. At this point, if someone asks me out, it might progress further on and that might be the person for me. So I immediately think like, why are you asking me out? What is your long-term plan? And why, why, what made you want to take me out for coffee, for instance? Like what about me is attractive to you? I'd heard obviously a lot of horror stories um, about dating apps where I've even had friends tell me that they've been speaking to somebody for several weeks, a few months, and then found out he was married. Um, I've had friends telling me, even guys telling me that they've been talking to girls and you know they found out that they're actually talking to lots of different guys at the same time and they're just wasting their time. وانا طولت هنا طولت هنا في 86 احنا كنا واحدة من 16 عائلة مصرية في برمنغهام بالضبط ف الطريقة احنا كنا بنعملها قبل كده ان بنعرف على الناس امي وابوها بيعرفوهم بناتهم يعني بالصراحة انا I didn't feel comfortable because I didn't know who these people were My parents wanted someone who they thought would be right for me, but they were scared of obviously their first generation immigrants here. Someone with Audina La Mastro or Sudan, I guess they kill for they're not ready to understand the differences here. And as much as the app and as the time to me as hobby were looking arba seen or hamasin. بعد كده قلت لنفسي يلا تجرب وخلاص يعني شو يعني ايه اللي هيحصل؟ I don't know يعني ما اعرفش بال 
طريق الدين لو كانت حلال او حرام بس انا دخلت بدنيا انا عاوز الاقي يعني واحده لحياتي انه اكمل ديني اكمل نص ديني ف استخدمت الاب الاول وبعد الشهر I deleted the app عشان زهق ده منها خالص يعني عشان the app I was using uh, it had blurred photos so يعني الصورة مش باينة جدا ف مش يعني بالنسبة لي لازم اشوف الوحدة اللي انا عاوز اتجوزها ف I reinstalled the app بعد ستة شهور وجربت تاني وكنت بقابل يعني ناس على الاب بس ما فيش يعني I felt like the other person was maybe speaking to six or seven people and then she'd probably meet me for a coffee and then meet someone else for a dinner and then someone else for dessert but I has to it's not it's not sustainable um, so then I deleted it again <laughs> and then I reinstalled it maybe a year later uh, and then I used other apps which aren't um, Muslim marriage apps and that worked better for a little bit and then I came back to the app I was using I felt the profiles were a little bit fake and I had the, the pictures were altered photoshop and I'm like what's the point? <laughs> And I can't tell you just relaxed, uh, independent, I want someone who understands her deen. Um, but the one thing I realized what improved for me to find a good match is when I said exactly what I wanted. Because I was one Muslim, the one. I can't tell you as one from the Arab. واحده شاميه ومصريه حاجه زي كده لقيت واحده على الاب امم انا كنت مستغرب انا اصلا البروف بتاعها كانت ديتيل جدا ف هي كانت عندها الليستا هي عايزه ايه هي مين اصلا ايه الحاجات المهمه لها هي عملت لايك على البروفايل بتاعي فانا عملت لايك باك um, he said to me, Hey, Salam. Hey, Slash Salam. <laughs> uh, and I said, yani, Salam, Slash, Hey. Um, and then kida, we didn't talk for two weeks. And when I came to the country, he said to me, Rasala Tani, sorry. كنت شغال مش عارف ايه كنت تبيع بيتا حاجه زي كده ف اوكي انا زي اوكي نو بروبلم فهي قالت لي انت مكتوب في البروفايل بتاعك انت عارف جوكس كتير فقلت لها اوكي ف ذا جوك از واي ار مشرومز انفايتد تو ذا بارتي اند شي سيز واي ناس بيكوز ذير ار فان جاي ف it's an awful joke, but uh, she loved it, so it's great. So, about the kid, yani, we were just talking a little bit on the app over 48 hours. And then she said, Do you want to talk on the phone? I was like, Yeah, let's talk. And for about the old Makalma, she said, Do you want to meet up? And I was like, Yes. For Abelna Bad Bada as Wayan. Abelna Borra. كنا بنمشي كده يعني ساعة ساعة ونص كان very quick surprising عشان من أولها احنا كنا عايزين نستنى سنة نعمل كتف كتاب استنى سنة نعمل فرح بعد كده نكمل حياتنا بس عملنا كلها في ثلاث شهور الحمد لله it's crazy بس الحمد لله it's okay الحمد لله يعني كوسن سنة بس دلوقتي احنا مستنيين البيبي بتاعنا ان شاء الله في شهر 11 ان شاء الله امم ان شاء الله يعني عيال تاني اكتر ان شاء الله باذن الله
I think being Muslim makes finding a partner challenging because when you when you think of the fact that in Islam marriage and like finding a partner marrying someone is equivalent to completing half your deen when you think about it like that that is such a big thing that you have to think it has to be the right person it has to be someone who you can complete half your deen with it has to be someone who understands you, who can be a companion to you. Somebody who's, who can be a friend and a companion, but also your partner and holds you accountable. It, it, there is so much to it when you're thinking as a Muslim because you're thinking of marriage as the long game instead of, okay, we will date, we'll see if we become boyfriend, girlfriend, we'll see if we become engaged. That's not, from the start, you have to think of the long-term vision. الخطابه هي تطبيق زواج مخصص للمسلمين نحن اليوم عندنا فوق ال5 مليون مستخدم ورصدنا لهلا فوق ال200 الف حاله زواج عندنا 600 الف اكتيف يوزر اليوم وعندنا فوق ال5 مليون مستخدم ان جنرال على التطبيق هن في عندك زواج العادي التقليدي يعني الشرعي وبيقولوا له الزواج الشرعي في عندك زواج المسيار وزواج التعددي ونحن الوحيدين اللي بنعطي هول الخيارات وبنسال هذا السؤال باسئله التوافق وهيدي اجت على خبره لانه بينت معنا انه في كابل بلشوا يتعرفوا على على التطبيق وبعدين بين معهم انه عم ينبشوا على نوع زواج مختلف نحن هون بنعتبر حالنا فشلنا بمهمتنا انه نعرفوا على شخص يقدر يتجوزه وبوقت سريع اليوم ومع التقدم التكنولوجي فإن تطبيق الخطابة للزواج الذي يتناسب مع تقاليدنا الإسلامية يساهم في مساعدة المسلمين على إيجاد شريك حياتهم بطريقة عصرية وآمنة وحلال المنصات التواصل هذه هي توفر نوع من الأمان نوع من الأمان في التواصل مع الآخرين لكن ساعات أهم شيء هو كيف كل شخص يوفر الأمان لنفسه لأنه ممكن ننجرف مع الإحساس بالأمان اللي موفرته المنصة أنه نروح لأبعد حد أنه نصير ما نحط حدود للأمان مالتنا سو so كل شخص من المفروض يكون مسؤول على حماية الخصوصية مالته يكون مضبوط انه في جدل دائما على شو الحلال وشو الحرام وخاصه بس كنا عم نحكي عن تعارف اونلاين نحن شخصيا ما بنحس حالنا معنيين بهذا بهذا السؤال لانه بالنهايه نحن تطبيق الخطابه اخذنا مفهوم موجود تقليدي صار له مئات السنين مقبول من المجتمع العربي وبس زدنا له الطابع التكنولوجي لنعمله فعال اكثر وبكلفه اقل وسهولة الوصول لإله يعني بالنهاية بيكون بالتليفون تبع كل شخص بجيبته <تصفيق> نحن هدفنا على تطبيق الخطابة أنه نجرب نعرف العالم على الشخص المناسب ليقدر يبني يبنوا حياة زوجية ناجحة وآراء الأهل ورأيهم كثير مهم لأنه هذا لاحظناه نحن دغري من الأول مثلا رح اعطيك مثل في كثير كوبليت تعرفوا باول مشوارنا على تطبيق الخطابه وعلى اساس ناويين يتجوزوا بس حدا من الاهل رفض فنحن درسنا هيدي الداتا وجربنا نفهم ليش الاهل رفضوا هذا الشيء بين معنا انه في نسبه عاليه منهم هود الكوبليت اللي اللي انعملوا على على تطبيق الخطابه الكابلز اللي انعملوا على تطبيق الخطابه يكون في فرق كبير مثلا بمستوى التعليم بيناتهم فدخلنا مستوى التعليم باسئله التقارب اللي بنسالها بالاول بس واحد يعمل يعمل الحساب تبعه على التطبيق وعطيناه ثقل كبير بالالجوريثم لنكون اكيدين انه نحن مش بس عم نعرفك على شخص معقول انت تتفق معه بس كمان اهلك يوافقوا عليه. نحن اليوم موجودين 
بالسعودية اولا بعدين ببلدان الخليج الباقية مثلا قطر الكويت بحرين الامارات وموجودين كمان بمصر نحن تطبيق الخطابة كل ما نفوت على سوق جديد من زبطه على قياس التقاليد والاهتمامات تبع العالم بهذا البلد بأسألة التقارب اللي بنسألها بالأول بس حدا ينشق حسابه على التطبيق مختلفة مثلا إذا كنت أنت عم تستعمل التطبيق من السعودية أما من مصر مثلا بالسعودية بنسأل أسئلة مثل من أي قبيلة هذا الشخص نسأل أسئلة كمان من لون البشرة لأنه انتبهنا حسب قالونا إياهم المستخدمين أنه هودي قصص مهمة بس يكونوا عم بينبشوا على شريك الحياة بمصر نسأل مثلا سؤال عن قائمة المنقولات قبل الزواج كمان هذا سؤال مهم للمصاروي قبل ما يقرروا ولا يلاقوا شريك الحياة قبل الخطابة بعتقد كان دور الأهل أكبر كان الأهل هن ينقوا والابن ولا البنت هن يوافقوا أما يرفضوا اليوم مع دخول الخطابة على سوق الزواج بالعالم العربي صارت الأعزب هو اللي عم بينقى هو اللي عم بيتعرف وبعدين الأهل هن اللي عم بيقبلوا ولا يرفضوا وبرأيي هذا بيعزز الفرص أنه يبنوا علاقة زوجية ناجحة لأنه بنية عم نعطي دور أكبر للأعزب اللي هو حيعيش الحياة الزوجية كثير دراسات بالنسبة للمرأة المسلمة اللي أو للنساء البنات المسلمات اللي يروحوا على المنصات اللي جايين من عائلات كثير تقليدية أنه الانتماء لهالمنصات يعطيهم إحساس بالقوة يعطيهم إحساس بالمساواة مع الرجل أنا مش الرجل اللي يختارني مش أنا أبقى لأنه هي التقليدية البنت تنتظر الرجال لحد ما يجي يخطبها أو عائلة تيجي تخطبها سو so, وهي بعدين تقرر إذا إيها أو لا لكن ما عندهاش تشويس إنه هي تروح تختار الرجال اللي هي حبته Alright, I'm gonna message the dude who put in his interest sports dandine. So I said, and you cook and clean. How are you not already being arranged by an auntie? He says, I guess I'm not mega rich, so not a first choice for aunties. Yikes, that got very real. That got very real, very quick. It's this dude who um, studies chemical engineering. And I started the conversation with like, oh, chemical engineering sounds cool. And this is what transpired next. All right, so he's replied. I just watched two of your YouTube videos, lol. Very funny. You seem fun, not gonna lie. Okay. Um, like you have a personality. Can you teach me Arabic? It's like saying you're funny for a girl. You know, it's not, that's not a compliment. Sorry, what do you bring to the table, buddy? كانت في حالات إيجابية ولكن كانوا محتاجين يشتغلوا على نفسهم اختيار الشريك كان مناسب لكن بعديها صارت هل المجتمع والعائلة يقبلون هذا الاختيار وصار نوع من البرشر ضغوطات عائلية لرفض لهذا الاختيار هذا سبب نوع من الريجكشن يعني البنت كانت تحس نفسها انه هي غير مقبوله وانه الشاب ما كانش موفر حمايه كافيه ليها سو so هذا عمل توتر في الزواج مالتهم وعدم احساس بعدم الامان سو so هم ساعات حسوا انه التجربه اللي جربوها اونلاين مش كافيه هو تحدي اونلاين وصار تحدي اوفلاين I first heard about dating apps back in 2012-11. That's when I was first introduced to them. Uh, obviously back then we were kids, so you know we didn't really use them that much. But around about 2017 time, that's when I started to use them properly. But since then, all the way till 2022, I haven't really had good luck with them. Um, I've spoken to many people, like numerous people, I can't even count how many. I have met with several people, but all of those things, they never really, you know, added to something significant. So I had a bad experience with them. 
It took me a while to get a first match, but when I got it, I was a bit excited and um, I just straight away told the person that like, you're the first match and this and that, but it didn't really last for that long. When I entered this world of dating apps, um, the first thing you see is like there's so many possibilities, like so many options to choose from, whereas with the traditional methods, you have a limited set of people, like, you know, you're at school, you're at college, university, you know, you're at work. You have a li limited number of people you can interact with, but with these dating apps, apparently you have numerous profiles from all around the world. So the options are unlimited, but of course it has its downsides as well. The difference between Islamic data, uh, dating apps and Western dating apps is not too much now. I mean, I've been using them for quite a few years now. You know, they mostly have similar features. There is a difference, however, in Muzmatch. Uh, you have the option of uh, blurring out your photos and keeping your profile private, but which kind of defeats the purpose because whenever I stumble upon a profile which have their photos blurred out, I don't really know if I should match with that person or not. But yeah, again, they're trying to keep their identities hidden, but again, you're on a dating app, so you need to show yourself as well. So that's the only difference I've seen so far. All right, um, so the finance professional, I said, you know, it sounds vague, what exactly do you do? And he said, I'm going to send a voice note, XO. I don't know if we're ready for that, buddy. That's like jumping the ship far too soon. Matched with an accountant. He has nice hair, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. You know, start with a compliment. Damn, accountancy. Grad, that. That's impressive. He says, Keeping with the vibe, I must say, impressed. You have really, really cool dress sense. That is the way to my heart to compliment my dressing sense. So, you're right, my hair is cool. It's almost like you know the way, and then for the B, I'll say it's almost like you know the way to my heart. I feel really bad because I have to break it to him that I'm doing this for a video. So my initial intention with making the video was, you know, make a, because. It was a running joke in my friend group that because I hadn't dated, that it would be funny for me to suddenly be introduced to so many people all at once in one place. And for my friends, it was like, okay, Hanin should go on Tinder, but I thought, okay, no, Tinder is too much. We'll try something more in line with, you know, something more Muslim, Islamic oriented. So I thought mixing the fact that I'm Muslim with Valentine's Day and relationships, I thought my initial reaction would be funny to document and to publish online. And that is what I did. And that was when I was 21. So the intention of that video was to be funny and to you know give my honest review of an app as a 21 year old who has just started you know, thinking and entertaining the idea of relationships and dating. كيف تعرفتوا على بعض انت وميكس؟ ضحى ضحى عندي اسامي يا ضحى انت من وين؟ من تونس حياك الله انت من وين؟ انا من الاردن واسم ميكس وعمر 22 سنه ومرشح ومفلوس ما تقول لي مرتبط لا مش مرتبط ربي حقق لي امنيه من امنيات <تصفيق> ما غير ما كذب عليكم لما نزلت فقره اسئله على الانستغرام 90% على ميكس متى رح تتزوجوا؟ رح تخطبوا؟ متى رح ينزل ميكس على الاردن؟ متى؟ متى رح يجي ميكس على تونس؟ متى وكيف وامتى وليش؟ ما اقدر اصرح لكن قريبا شهر اقل. وين العروس؟ يااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااااا
السنوات الجاية العشر سنوات الجاية أو الخمسة عشر سنة الجاية يكونوا ممكن الأشخاص اللي تزوجوا تزوجوا عبر المنصات التواصل وهذا يسمح لهم أنه يتقبلوا الفكرة أكثر وأكثر ممكن أولادهم رح يشجعوهم على أنه يدخلوا في تجربة الزواج عن هذه الطريقة As for how I might find my future partner, I would like for it to be outside of an app, inshallah, but at the same time, I'm also aware that if that is how it's meant to be, then that is how... I'm not actively going on an app for a while. I'm, I'm done with apps. But if I meet someone online and that is how it's meant to be, then that is how it's meant to be. I'm not going to download an app, though. I feel like that is... That chapter is closed. <laughs>